Hello and welcome to this new series of videos that I'll be doing looking at painting miniatures that are part of commissions or part of my personal collection. In this case I have a very special really old hammer, the Keeper of Secrets, for a customer that is Carnifex, my co-host on the Chronic Command podcast and it's been featured in the War Colors paint review that I just released earlier and I'd already painted one of the boots using the Chaos Black which has got a nice satin finish and uh, I then went and did the whole model all the chain mail anything that was in black leather and I would like to do that process first so covering everything that I can see that needs to be done in Chaos Black is now painted in Chaos Black including all the metallic parts anything I'm going to paint in silver or gold will also be painted using black so I'll do that and probably do that in a couple of stages, so in a couple of layers and make sure that everything is all neatly painted black before going on to the next stage. So now I'm going to take some electric blue from Vallejo Game Color and this will go, well this will be used for the skin color. Now the skin color will be nice and blue, so I'm taking some dark Prussian blue as well and I'm going to mix those two colors together on my wet palette and a 50-50 mix and it gives me this nice mid-tone. Now of course you could use a paint that has this mid-tone already up to you. I just grab a couple of paints in my, my paint drawer there and uh, use that. There's no sort of specific uh, chemistry to it. It's just I just take two colors that I like that I think would be uh, a good suit for this particular color scheme as we're sort of starting from a dark to light which is the way I like to paint sort of layering up from a dark tone up to a light tone and we want the skin on this particular Keeper of Secrets as it's Slanesh in more of a uh, sort of like a fluorescent sort of finish so yeah we're going to add a lot more uh, layers of lighter colour over the dark background Okay, so we've given a couple of coats of that particular mix of those two blues together to form the base of our flesh tone. Now we're going to mix more of that electric blue into the base uh, color and we're just going to start layering uh, highlights. So basically I'm using a number one brush here. Now the brushes I'm using are from Rosemary & Co. I'm no way in, in uh, any way endorsed by Rosemary & Co, but I, I prefer these using these brushes. They're kind of a um, mix between sable and synthetic, and I like to use brushes that are kind of like this so that I get a lot of uh, use out of them as I'm painting a lot each day for long hours. So I need brushes that are going to withstand the punishment that I put them through uh, day by day. So I'm going to start, yeah, just basically taking more and more of that electric blue and build up a nice light um, uh, highlight and sort of blend that into the base color of the blue. Now taking some ivory, I'm going to put that onto the palette and I'm actually going to use that uh, as to highlight that electric blue to a much lighter color. Now you can add white if you want to, and I think at later stages I do add white into this highlight, but I like ivory because it's more of a softer tone and it's not so severe as white, so I like to add, uh, add ivory to my highlights, highlights when possible. So we can add that and we're just going to sort of again layer in again from, uh, from all the raised areas of the model and sort of just line in and uh, sort of blend in that to the base color of our of our blue.
Now, as you can see, it's taking quite a few different layers and you need to build them up until you, you find that, just find the right color that you think, yep, that's basically the level I want to uh, illuminate the skin. And you find like a cutoff point and you think, yep, it's, it's done it. I think I've got to I've reached that point where I think, yeah, that's a nice looking skin tone. And you can just continue doing that if you want to. If, you know, you don't want it to get it too white. You want to keep that blue hue in there. But um, just keep adding ivory or white to your base mixture and just kind of blend it in. Just take your time and um, just try to get the blends as smooth as possible. Now we're going to take some field blue because now we want to highlight the blacks of our model. Okay, well, I'm taking the field blue. Now the reason why it's a nice dark sort of bluish gray and I'm going to add some of that dark Prussian blue into that mixture as well just because I like adding uh, blues into my blacks when I highlight them so add that in there and mix it up and we need to make that as a nice dark sort of under layer of highlights on all the parts that are black doing the same kind of process sort of starting from the, uh, the highest recesses of the model and um, covering and blending in areas which are sort of the highlight of the most and keeping the underside areas that are naturally shaded, keeping them much darker. Now I'm gonna take some pale blue, another Vallejo model color, and I'm gonna add that to my palette. And I'm gonna work that into our sort of mid-tone highlight here Okay, sort of just making the next highlight that I want to use that for all the black leather. And now I'm sort of just sort of, uh, I like to just call it sort of drawing in the highlights around the edges of the leather parts there. And of course, I'm going to blend that into the uh, lighter parts of the model as well. But um, yeah, sort of penciling in, lining in, uh, and uh, just making sure you're going to do all the outlines of the leather just to give it more definition. Now we get to the part where we're going to add some metallics. Now this is a model air Vallejo color called gold. Um, now, to be honest, <laughs> it's the first time I'm using this paint and I wasn't all that um, overwhelmed with it, to be honest. Uh, the silver is fantastic as a paint, but um, the gold was just very brown, too brown and it was just very flat. It just wasn't uh, gleaming as much as I thought it would be. So I was a little bit disappointed with that. I'm really looking forward to the War Colors metallic range. There's almost like a dozen different paints in there um, that really look exciting. So, and the metallics that I've, I've used with War Colors so far have been very good. So I'm looking forward to, fingers crossed, that that will be coming out very soon for all of us to enjoy because it's got like things like, um, you know, purple colored metallics it's got green you know blue as well so really nice colors especially for chaos they look really uh, they would match really well so actually i'm using a, a nostalgia 94 mithril silver now and all those studs that are on that boot i'm just going to pick those out all the belt buckles anything that i have intended to paint with silver like the chain mail and that kind of thing i'm doing now with uh, a good two layers of the mithril silver Okay, so this stage looks pretty good. We've got a couple of layers of metallics on there, but we've been washing it out, all our metallics in our water pot, which is now full of metallic flakes. So you need to go and wash that out before you start using any other colors, guys. Okay, now I'm gonna use some FW Artist ink here to shade our gold. So I'll drop that onto my palette, and then we're just gonna water that down because it's very, very heavy. 
this this um, this particular thing. I really like it actually, uh, and those bottles will last you for decades. So just water that down and just shade the gold with this in all parts of the model, and then we uh, let that to dry. Okay, I want to do something a little bit different, so I'm taking this purple glaze from War Colors and I'm going to use that on my silvers just to make it a little more different. I didn't want to use just black uh, for the wash on these, I wanted it to look a little bit more slaneshy, so a bit more attractive looking because he's you know the keeper of secrets, so he should be um, you know trying to um, allude people to his presence and trying to seduce them and that kind of thing. So I thought, well, I might be using this wash, it might be in, uh, like this glaze, might be a really nice idea for the metallics, and it actually turned out to be quite a good idea. Now I've got this other wash too, uh, <laughs> named Rot Ring, which is uh, not a very nice name, uh, and I wouldn't sort of wish that on my worst enemy, but it's a ink I got from my mother, I don't know, 20 years ago, that's still going strong, uh, from Germany. So I'm using that as a darker shade for all the metallics as well and the silver and um, I think the combination between that and the, the purple glaze gives a really nice effect. So here now I'm using a colour called Beige, which is part of the Vallejo model colour range. And I'm using that to highlight all the gold parts. Now of course gold is a metallic paint, but you can also highlight it using regular paints like white. Or beige, which is more of a yellowy uh, ivory colour. So use that to you just to outline all the uh, areas of the metallic paints of gold here. And um, yeah, it just makes the metallics pop a little bit. Now we come to these big horns on his head here. Now I'm going to use beige as a base color for the horns because I want them really nice and you know like ivory basically. So I don't want to go too extreme in the shading, so I just want to use beige as a nice transitional colour between that and ivory. So give that a base colour first. And then using ivory on the palette, I'm going to use that as a highlight colour, so I'm just going to blend that back into the beige. Okay, so now we're going to just start uh, blending up that uh, claw, the pink claw, adding ivory to the pink. That's just Vallejo pink I'm using here. Uh, that's like a model color paint, not a game color paint. So it's actually really nice. It's a really nice paint, actually, a really nice color. It's quite muted. It's not a satin finish, but yeah, it looks quite nice. So I'm basically just adding that into there and just going to blend it. Uh, right up to you know very light color and then blend it back using the pink and sort of just going to and fro until I sort of blend into a, a color that I'm really happy with but yeah trying to keep it as light and bright as possible because it is slanesh and uh, we want a nice bright pink So the other claw we painted in jade green, so I'm using that as a base colour for that. And again, just mixing in 50-50 with the ivory as a base coat. Now 
And same technique here, just basically just blending in like a wet blend. So keeping the paint wet and then using the ivory to blend in to get the highlighted colors and so just going back and forth between you know, light and dark until you get a nice transition of um, color there that you're happy with and you know sort of very light at the very peaks of the um, of the claws and then sort of getting transitioning into a darker color to the base of the claw. For the pink claw I'm going to use some of this uh, War Colors Purple Glaze. I'm just going to water that right down and I'm just going to use that as basically just to enrich and deepen the color of the pink and just basically just put that on the base of it and in the the crevice of that join there where the two parts of the claw meet just to make sure that's you know it gives it a bit more definition and it just makes it a bit more rich of a color so that's what I'm using those glazes for which are really really handy for that and for the green I'm going to use that turquoise glaze from War Colors this time I haven't actually used it yet so this is a good opportunity to do so Again, just uh, watering it down because you really want to just make it a really very, very light consistency. The teeth were painted the same way as the horn, so basically using that beige color as a base coat and then ivory to highlight. And at this stage we're almost done so we're getting almost there now so it's looking pretty cool and now we're going to go to the freehand part now this is sort of the more technical side of this this particular paint job but um, if you feel up and willing to it and uh, you want to give it a go uh, I've painted many many of these slanesh uh, all the marks of slanesh as a symbol on all of these miniatures especially the marines and and uh, the characters and that kind of thing. So I've had lots of practice with this one. So basically you just want to paint like a round ball as at the base of this particular mark of Slanesh. And um, now if you if you get like an oblong shape or something like that that you, doesn't look really round, then you can always go back with the black and sort of just reshape it. Okay, so the very last step, we're going to add some nice war colors, goblin green to the base. I'm going to paint the whole base green, and then when that's dry, I'll use PVA glue. I will cover the PVA glue on the top of the base, and then cover that in a very fine sand. And when that sand is dry, I will repaint the, the sand in goblin green, the same color. Again, so everything is covered, and then let that dry again. And then I can dry brush that with goblin green and the sunburst yellow and beige, you can use beige, you can use ivory uh, to just dry brush over the top of that. And that's it guys. Thanks again for watching the video guys. Thank you for subscribing and liking and commenting on the videos. I really appreciate that. Remember to share the podcast and the videos to like-minded people who would enjoy this content. And if you'd like to support the podcast and the YouTube channel, then please consider becoming a Patreon. Thank you very much for watching, bye-bye.